And finally, something like bookending the day. So that can be done in two ways. It could be like literally at the end of the class, you know, one thing that you appreciate and be uh, grateful for. Um, or it can be that you encourage your students, especially if they are feeling quite stressed at the moment, <clears throat> to consider having like a gratitude diary. And so that they put three things into their diary at the end of the day that they are grateful for, they appreciate, that went well. And again, it's just encouraging um, us to balance ourselves up so that we don't have this 80% negativity, negativity all the time, that there is somehow, uh, oh yeah, there's also lots of really good stuff going on in my life. Because we need to balance out that negativity bias. We are five times more likely to remember the bad experience than the good experience. Yeah, because it keeps us safe. Because if we do, you know, have a problem at work and our boss, you know, the classic one I say is the boss says, you're doing really great, I love that project, the group are really, really happy to have you. Um, I got some really lovely report back from the teacher. There's just this one thing. Now, what do you take home? This or this? You probably take home this, right? Because this is to worry about and concern yourself. Because if you don't get it right, well, maybe, you know, you'll get a bad reputation or maybe your job will be on the line. If your job's on the line, then da 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 da, da. Okay? So it's all about keeping yourself safe and secure. But we forget these ones, the good ones. It's okay to consider the one that you need to work on, but also to really take on the good stuff as well. Because otherwise we get a very unbalanced uh, perspective of the world and how we're doing. Okay, so I'm just going to very quickly, because I know I wanted to do some questions, just very briefly going through what we've done. Um, so this one word for the body, one for the mind, breathing, and then noticing again how you feel after you've just had time to check in with yourself. We did a couple of exercises of just sitting and listening. We did an exercise there on um, just looking at the power of words and making lists about emotions and you know, considering how they make us feel in our body and then even moving into another example of you know, exploring uh, physically how that looks on the body. We then potentially played a game of throwing uh, paper around, X and Y, what triggers us, so you can get an idea as to what's going on in the room. And then, you know, considering perspective and starting to question our thoughts and beliefs and just to see whether, you know, really they are 100% true or whether we could see things in a slightly different way. And then finally, just moving into looking for the good, um, looking for what we can feel gratitude and appreciation for and potentially how we can help other people as well. Okay. And yeah. Just as you as teachers consider how you feel. So I found this, this, um, this sign was on, a, I think it was Indiana University Hospital. Please take responsibility for the energy you bring into this space. You are modeling for them um, how to be in the world. More than what you teach, <laughs> where you act, the words you use, your body language. How are you feeling? So as much as these are for you to use in the classroom, they're also for you to use as teachers, to be able to steady yourselves. You've already got a really, really you know, stressful job um, and it's just got twice stressful. So really, you know, look after yourselves. Be aware of the energy you take into the class, steady yourselves with the breath. Like literally, before you go online or into the classroom, just going, <sighs> look up and smile, it can really help. Give yourself a hug, that gets the oxytocin flowing. So we talk about like adrenaline and cortisol pumping around our body. Oxytocin is created when you give yourself a hug. It can be really useful just to make yourself feel a little bit better. Because life is uncertain. Um, life is always changing. Nothing is staying the same ever. And we cannot know the future. But um, as John Kabat-Zinn said, who's the, the creator of the course that I teach, MBSR, uh, you can't stop the waves, but you can learn to surf. Okay, and I think that would be a really lovely place to end. Thank you very much for your attention and for joining in. I hope that was really useful. <laughs> at peace i watched the the whole thing just i just felt very peaceful i think everyone else did as well um that was yeah. such a such a lovely um session 
thanks for all the advice that i think that summary at the end really really helps as well so thank you so much emma you're getting lots of uh, yeah. lots of love on the right here yeah. lots of thank yous yeah well thank you to all of you keep doing what you do just just look after yourselves you know they, you know it's a bit like the um the airplane you know you 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 put the mask the oxygen mask on yourself first before you yes. put on the child <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, have you got time for a few questions, Emma? I have, yes, if anybody has Great. any questions. So we've had a few questions throughout. Uh, anyone, if you have any questions, please do put them in the chat box and we'll do our best to ask Emma. Yeah. Um, so we've had a few already. So this is when you were talking about, um, uh, I suppose you were talking about focusing your thinking and not thinking about the past or present and thinking about where you are now. Yeah. Um, and Kakruna was asking, uh, she says he or she, so I'm not sure Kakruna, they said they think a lot um, and you talked about how to focus the thinking but is there a way of reducing thinking reducing that 70,000 number <laughs> I think the problem, so you know through a mindfulness uh, I, I teach meditation and, and everyone gets very stuck around like I can't stop thinking you know if you sit down for, for fo two minutes to try and just concentrate you'll find that your mind wanders all over the place when you're when it's untrained and actually through training it does start to settle down but um, it's okay that you're thinking it really is the very process of trying to get rid of thoughts just as the very process of trying to get rid of emotions sticky uncomfortable emotions guess what gives you more of the same what you resist persists so actually instead of trying to get rid of them you can do this thing I was talking about witnessing. So just sort of sitting quietly and just starting to notice those thoughts. And you can do something called labeling, which is like sitting there and going, okay, I can't stop thinking about that email. What would I call that? I call that worry. Okay, hi, worry. Okay, and now I'm going to be quiet. I'm going to maybe just notice my breath. And now I'm starting to notice that I'm thinking about dinner. Okay, what's that? Mm, planning. Okay, hi, planning. Can you see now you're not in it? you're suddenly going, oh, look, I'm watching it spinning around. And that in itself is just allowing it to have space. You're not pushing it away. You're recognizing it. But you maybe also are deciding to refocus on something else. So it could be your mm. breathing or, and I must say as well, sometimes people find breathing triggering. Okay, so it's not necessarily the best anchor. Some people like actually don't want to think about breathing because it makes me more stress, which is why mm. there's another option of anchoring into your feet and just feeling what's going on in your feet for a moment. Because as much as we think that we can do two things at the same time, the famous multitasking, we really can't. And so we can use that. Like, hey, mind, you're over there chatting away about this, that, and the other. How are my feet right now? You know, or when you take a glass of water, rather than still be thinking, go, actually, I'm going to taste the water. I'm actually going to feel the sensation of that water going into my body. Mm -hmm. Now, you're not thinking anymore. You're, you've refocused into something else. So, thinking a lot, per se, although it can be stressful, it's only stressful because we resist it. It's just thoughts. They're just happening. And if we can step out of them and witness them as just thoughts that are happening, rather than, what's wrong with me, I can't stop thinking, again, it's a totally different perspective on it, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's, um, it's kind of okay. Oh, it's just another thought. Oh, it's just worry. Rather than, oh God, I'm worried again. It's just like, oh, worry is here. Oh, planning is here. Oh. And not only do they come, but they go. Okay. Does that take so, a little bit of practice, Emma, to be able to do that, to be able to witness? I was I, trying it as you were talking. I was trying to do that. I was trying to recognize a negative emotion and trying to watch it. And it was quite difficult. It's quite an abstract thing to do with your mind, isn't it? It is. I think the thinking is, is easier to grab hold of um, because the thinking is always happening, you No, know? There's always something going on in the contents of one's brain. Mm. Um, and this is why mindfulness is connected with meditation, because meditation is a very, it's like the laboratory. It's where you sit down and you go, right then, let me just see if I can accept what's happening. That's the key, not the resistance to it. Can I just accept I've got a busy mind? But at the same time, I can also refocus on my breath or my body, and then it doesn't matter. Because the problem is, when it matters, and we can't get rid of it, then we get all stressed about it, right? Here's what I want, here's what I've got. They're not the same, okay? Here's what I've got, and it's okay. <coughs> I've got this, no problem. I know, well, it sounds, I know it sounds simple, and I know it's not easy, which is why, you know, people who do, an, a, like an